I'm going to start with you, Suzanne. Um, you know, this is a, a pretty unique deal. Uh, SPACs for many, many years had a very bad name. Uh, people thought that they were effectively a, a compensation scheme masquerading uh, as an investment strategy. Uh, and when I say compensation scheme, compensation scheme for the, the manager of these SPACs because they typically took so much, uh, uh, it took such a big piece of the deal. What do you think is driving it now? Well, the SPAC market, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you for having me this morning. Um, it's really a great market environment in general now for SPACs. Um, financial investors have significant liquidity. You know, interest rates are low. Uh, public equity market valuations are at all-time highs. The number of public companies available to own has declined steadily. And obviously, the COVID uh, pandemic has challenged the financial position of the vast majority of companies. So. All of these factors create tremendous opportunities for a great sponsor, the right sponsor, to get a deal done. Well, let, me, let me go to Jim on this, though. Jim, the big question about a SPAC has always been, you could either go the public route, go the IPO route, which we know so well requires a lot of diligence and, and a lot of exposure, if you will, to the investment community. Uh, this short circuits that, and, uh, but, there's, but there's oftentimes a cost for it as well. Why is this the better path, if you will, than the IPO route? Well, uh, first of all, thanks, Andrew, for having me. And it's good to come on and talk about this particular SPAC because it is so unique and so different. Generally speaking, and you hit it on the head, SPACs had a very, very bad name um, going into it because it, it was viewed as sort of a vehicle for the promote of the sponsors. Now, though, you have had several legitimate investment professionals, and you, you've outlined several uh, managers, accomplished in, um, investors, promoting the SPAC uh, structure. Uh, this is, it's just a very easy way to get a deal done if you are a company, uh, if you're looking to go public, if you want to access the public markets, because it's already a public vehicle. All of the regulations, all of the the, the things that you have to do to go public, it's avoided because it's, it's done already. So I think this market is actually here to stay. It's become legitimized because of the players that are now in the market that actually have investors that are significant investors entering the market. So if you stop and think about it, it's like going the IPO route, except tremendously easier. So it, it's got significant appeal now. Right. What, what do you think, you know, I, I don't know when we're going to have to measure it, but three years out, what do you think, it's, what do you think performance, though, of these are going to look like relative to companies that went the more traditional IPO route? Uh, uh, is that, well, I will tell you this. I think it's going to depend on the manager. Yep. Um, significantly, it depends on the manager, the investment manager. It depends on the thesis. It depends on the sponsors, the alignment of interest, and, and the performance of the company. I don't think that it's going to come down to a SPAC versus an IPO for performance. I think it's going to come down to who you invested in and why you invested in it and what business did they buy and how they ran it. I think that's really going to be the metric. Yeah. I, I would agree. Hey, Suzanne, with, one of the other. Go ahead. I, I would agree with that. A SPAC is only as good as its sponsor, its structure, and the market conditions in which it's operating. And, you know, the average SPAC size so far this year in 2020 has been roughly $300 million. What makes this transaction so significant, as you noted, was the size. And it's the largest amount of committed capital ever for a SPAC. So given the size and the fact that the strategy is to buy only a minority interest rather than a controlling interest in a company, it's clear the acquisition target will be a large and high-quality company that should perform very well. Right. 